Mr. Chairman, I would yield now two minutes to a member of the Energy and Commerce Committee, a gentleman from California, Mr. McNearney. The gentleman from California is recognized for two minutes. Mr. Speaker, I, I thank the chairman for allowing me two minutes. We're here today to talk about a global problem that demands a global solution. Since the Industrial Revolution, a significant amount of carbon has been building up in the atmosphere, and until just recently, the United States was the number one emitter of carbon pollution. As China ramped up its emissions, we lost that dubious title, but we're still dumping massive amounts of carbon into the atmosphere. This carbon in the atmosphere has caused energy to accumulate in the oceans and the skies, and that's now causing changes in our environment, and these changes will continue to grow. The global solution we need is one that the United States actually had a hand in crafting. We led the efforts in the development and adoption of the Paris Climate Accord, but now, because of this administration's decision, we're telling the world to do as we say, not as we do. The Paris Climate Accord is one of the most comprehensive deals to date and is a worldwide agreement to begin reducing carbon emissions. It is the important first step in the battle to stop the dangerous spiral of climate change. If we retreat from the Paris Accord, we are condemning future generations to a world filled with catastrophic climate change and conflict. HR 9 will help heal this rift by putting us in alignment with the rest of the global community and holding us to standards that we help put in place. My Republican colleagues say they believe in climate change, but have always refused action. The Paris Climate Agreement is action. Let's get with the program. The United States has led by example, so today, I implore my colleagues, adopt H.R. 9. Don't make us the past villain for future generations. Mr. Speaker, I yield back. Uh, the gentleman.